Hey everybody, it's V. Welcome home, Jackalope Tribe. Today we're going to talk about why I stopped doing testosterone injections. And before we get too far into it, I just want to make sure that you guys are aware that no, I'm not detransitioning. Uh, that is not the case. I stopped doing testosterone injections because burr, 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 there was a better alternative for me and I decided to go with that one. So we're gonna go ahead and get into why I stopped doing testosterone injections and then actually talk about what the procedure was that I had done to make things easier on myself and hopefully a better way for my body to receive testosterone in a sort of healthier fashion. So let's, let's get started. When I started T on November 19th, 2019, the initial mode of injection was an intramuscular, intramuscular injection. Jeez, I can talk, I promise. I promise you guys I can talk. The initial mode of putting testosterone into my body was an intramuscular injection, which involves using a, a quite a, a long needle to get the medication, which is a thick, viscous sort of like oil in a vial, into my thigh muscle and then my body would like metabolize it and put it out through the rest of my body and and the changes would occur and they did they did occur and the first time i did my injection and the first few times i did my injection i wasn't anxious it didn't hurt and like all was good but there came a point in time where for some reason i got just the most ridiculous anxiety about sticking myself which was something I had never really experienced before. Um, in the past, I had dealt with certain like self-harm issues, and so I wasn't really ever... I never had that don't harm yourself thing that people have. Um, I have that now, <laughs> specifically from doing intramuscular injections with the testosterone. When your body is aware that you are going to be like, causing one, a huge hormonal fluctuation, and two, uh, scar tissue to develop in specifically in a muscle that gets used quite frequently. It's going to send as many signals as it can to make you not do that thing. So that's, that's kind of what happened, I think, is I was starting to get anxiety about that. So my doctor switched me over to doing subcutaneous injections, which are just as squicky. Like, I really, really, really don't like them. With the intramuscular injection, it is one of the older methods of injecting testosterone. It's considered the least effective in that your body, the way that it processes it, you end up with a lot of what's called free hormone or free something. Basically, it's the overflow from the testosterone that then converts into estrogen and other hormones. So the subcutaneous injection, which is an injection into the fat layer, like in your skin or just below your skin, which is used for things like insulin, that one has a lot less of a free hormone thing and your body tends to process it a little bit better and you get good results from it, at least what people are saying now. But I had, I had personal issues with that one. Um, issue number one was I was taking away insulin needles from people who needed them by purchasing them, but I'm sure that just like testosterone shortage, there's probably insulin needle shortage issues, especially with what's going on right now. So I, I felt bad about that. And thing number two was I was doing the injections wrong, because they didn't actually teach me how to do them until I switched to not doing injections, which is today. Today is the day that I stopped doing injections. It is April 23rd, 2020. When I was injecting, a couple of things would happen. One, for the subcutaneous, one was my needle would bend or break. So not only is that now wasted testosterone, but it's a wasted needle and wasted money. Um, and, and, and you can't use a broken needle. Like if it, your needle bends, don't stick it in your body because there's a chance that you could lose it. I did it anyway and I, I got kind of my doctor looked at me like I was a little bit crazy. Thing number two was I wasn't aware that you're meant to inject subcutaneous injections at a 180 degree ish angle as opposed to a 90 degree angle. So with intramuscular injections, when you stick yourself, it's a 90 degree angle. You want to go straight into the muscle. You want to be muscle, needle, perpendicular, 90 degrees. 
that's how it works. With intramuscular injections, you don't want to accidentally like scratch your muscle, which is what I ended up doing. So I was in injecting the subcutaneous injections into my abdomen, and instead of going at this degree, like, like that, right? Um, I was still doing the perpendicular degree. So 180 degree angle in is what the doctor was saying, and that ended up being like a million times better when he showed me that. But when I was injecting perpendicular, I could feel the needles scraping against my abdomen muscles as I was breathing, and it really freaked me out. It also made it a lot more difficult to push the solution, which was really thick already, into my body, which mean, meant the injection was going to take longer. On top of that, with the subcutaneous injection, I actually felt the stinging and burning of the solution under my fat layer uh, a lot more than I ever had with the intramuscular injection. So I was like, nah, subcutaneous, not for me. So today, I actually went in. It was an incredibly expensive procedure. Insurance doesn't cover it. But basically what I had done was they took these little testosterone pellets, and I've actually got a video of this coming up soon for those of you who are curious about the procedure and how it works. They took the, the testosterone pellets that were created in a compound pharm pharmacy and actually put them in my subcutaneous layer, so like in my fat layer, in my glute, and so there's like four little pellets in there that are crystallized bioidentical testosterone. Uh, which my body will metabolize over the next five to six months. So one, I won't have to do injections. Uh, two, it was it was a 20 minute procedure, just about. And three, I don't have to worry about my body not getting tea. And and there's a lot less of the free hormone floating around. And as I'm, I'm numbering at you, but none of the numbers mean anything. <laughs> um, so there's a lot less of the free hormone. And on top of that. Um, I'm not having all the peaks and troughs that you get with injections. I know in the UK, they tend to do three-week injections, so you do a big injection at the beginning of the three-week cycle. So you get your huge testosterone boost, your high energy, but you've also got a lot of grease, a lot of acne, and then you get your, your mid, right? Which is, you're feeling probably pretty okay at that point, and then you've got your trough, which is like the end of the cycle and you just if you feel like trash and if you've got anxiety your anxiety is a lot higher if you've got depression you have higher risk of being depressed and if you're like me and you have issues maintaining energy throughout the day you end up really lethargic and i was having those similar things with my one week injections but a lot less i think a lot lower degree than i would have if i was on three three week injections so my one week injection cycle was um, I would inject on a Monday or Tuesday, I would sleep for a day, then I would have enough energy, like, I would be functional, but I would also see a spike on day two and three in acne and greasiness, as well as acid reflux, which was interesting. Then after that, I would just kind of be horny, but I would mellow out, I think I would level out a little bit, and then I would hit my trough, which was just a really high anxiety, like, day or two where I'm, I'm tense and I can feel it in my body, and I become tired again. I ended up going about a week and a half without a shot because I just couldn't get myself to do the subcutaneous injections, and my pharmacy didn't have the other needles that I needed for intramuscular. I got to re-experience what it feels like to have really low T. I'm super glad that I went in today and got the pellets. They're gonna take about seven to 10 days to actually start activating. But I also was able to have them show me and demonstrate a subcutaneous injection with the testosterone. So now not only do I know how to do it, but I got it on video so I can show you guys how to do it as well. So my plan for the next couple of weeks is to be releasing the video of how to do an intramuscular injection, the video of how to do a subcutaneous injection, and the video of what it looks like um, to have that procedure where they inject the platelets into your fat layer. And my doctor actually answers a few questions that I ask while the procedure is happening. It's a procedure you're awake for. Um, you don't feel anything as long as you react well to lidocaine. So yes, there's, there's a lot of stuff that I want to share with you guys regarding those, but yes, I, I've decided to stop doing injections. Um, intramuscular or subcutaneous 
I feel like the pellets option is a better option than androgel because androgel, which if you don't know is the testosterone gel lotion that you rub on your skin, um, I think it's a better option than androgel because I don't have to worry about applying it at the same time every day. I don't have to go four hours after applying it without touching another human being. Um, those, are, those are two very like important things to me. I'm the worst at keeping track of time. And with social isolation and quarantine being the way that they are, that would not have ever been, I think, a great option for me. So that's all I have to share with you guys today about why I switched from doing injections. If you guys have questions, comments, concerns, list them in the comments below. I want to open up a dialogue with you guys and actually have a conversation and talk about all of these things that have been going on. And if you're, if you're not squeamish, um, be sure to check out the next three videos, which are going to be about how to inject intramuscular and subcutaneous and the procedure itself, the actual physical procedure in an incision in my glute. So if those are things you want to see and you're not squeamish, I super recommend you check them out. They're coming out very soon. Um, thank you very much for watching. If you like what you saw today and you want to see more, hit that button down below, subscribe, become a member of the Jackalow tribe, and earn your antlers, and don't forget to follow me on social media. Um, really, I just want you to follow my cat. Her Instagram handle is at juniper underscore Vegas, and she's just sweet and happy and soft, and I put videos of her purring all the time, and like since we moved, she wasn't really sleeping in the bed with me anymore, but she finally started sleeping in the bed with me again, and so I'm gonna put a picture of her curled up while we're watching TV um, at the end of this video because I really want to fucking share that with you guys. Um, okay, that's it. That's everything. I love you very much, and don't forget to eat food and drink water, and I will see you in the future. Peace out, Homeskill Biscuit.